Hello, welcome back. This is Ryan again. I'm going to switch it up a little bit and I'm going to talk a little bit about um, transcending the current paradigm of politics. Who's going to win, uh, you know, the election this time around, Republican, Democrat, whatnot. And what I'm really going to talk about is um, why most of the awakened ones are disenfranchised with the entire system simply because they are awake and they can see through the hypocrisy of the the show or the puppets that are being played around. I'm going to use um, a great little uh, excerpt from the book uh, The Unfoldment by Neil Kramer. He is a British philosopher, uh, modern times, currently living in Oregon, I believe. Um, but he's just very eloquent in the way he breaks down the psychology of the system. So here we go. The Unfoldment. Persuading people to give all their time away is perhaps the single most important element of the cult strategy. So when he says the cult strategy, he's talking about the culture, the common culture that is influenced by technology and mainstream media. Ide ideologically speaking, the apparently opposing politics of each side of the game keep people involved by creating a convincing illusion of choice. To the untrained eye, it looks like a fair and open race between the reds and the blues, with the public able to vote for their preferred color. For those who favor even-handed resource distribution and management, there is socialism. For those who prefer the every-man-for-himself model, there is capitalism. If either of these models gets a bit extreme, they may morph into communism or fascism. Taken to the ultimate, the circle closes back on itself, and they become the same totalitarian regime. The politics is irrelevant until that time that the Republicans and the Democrats duke it out and give the appearance of principled men and women fighting for the betterment of humankind. All the while, their blank maneuverings are endlessly debated by the conservative talk show hosts and the progressive radio pundits. People are hypnotized into believing that this sliver of unreality is all there is. Once again... There can be no ultimate victory. Both sides are but players in a pantomime that is owned, directed, and staged by the same master. So that's a pretty key point right there. That's the first paragraph. Basically talking about the show and that it's already orchestrated and it's really put together by the higher-ups that control media and own media outlets. Basically, it's a pantomime. It's a show. And they already know who's going to win. They've already picked it. And they're already rolling out their particular policies. And we're just all captivated by the show. At least some of us. Okay, continuing on. The secret to changing the game is to change one's perception of the game itself. Now, how is it played? But what is it? When its existence has been fully understood at the inner level, this automatically rewrites the rules of engagement. It becomes possible to stand confidently outside the system and have the might of the universe right behind you. The universe loves insurrectionaries. From the highly zoomed out perspective, this is a key stage of warrior training and is essential to the unfoldment. And when he's talking about warrior training, he's talking about a life that is full of heart, something that a life that means something to you as an individual. That's what warrior training is about. And then when he, when he uses the word the unfoldment, he's talking about your own personal awareness, deepening of your own self, unfolding. Okay, moving on. First, it must be acknowledged that the game is not designed to have an outcome. It exists only to draw the player into playing it. There can be no individual conquest. There is only playing the game. The longer the game is played, the further the player is drawn into his or her own inauthenticity and dishonor. By achieving clarity and shifting one's perspective in this way, consciousness is immediately moved away from the erroneous idea that his or her game is the only game. The density of its reality is suitably reduced. When the mind rescinds the mental energy that was feeding the game, its gravitation begins to weaken, and the individual is no longer inevitably pulled into playing. Other opportunities become perceptible. It is accepted that real solutions are never televised. Let me repeat that. 
Real solutions are never televised. Interesting, huh? Synchronicities align with higher purposes and new paths appear. Intellectual sovereignty and psychological empowerment begin to reveal natural solutions that arise from real people and real communities. Once this principal movement of consciousness has been performed, external circumstances rapidly begin to evolve. So here is one of the most empowering things he says, and I really like it. He's basically saying once you see the, the trickery, once you see how the game is being played on you, and you agree to play this little game, once you see through the sort of the, the charade, you begin to wake up and you actually free up energy and awareness to live life in a more sovereign and a more empowered way. And I think that's what uh, the maneuver should be for us right now. I think it's become pretty pretty obvious that the media is just incredibly corrupt. Um, I, I mean, I won't go into all, all the reasons why, but it should be pretty obvious to most people. If you want to be happy, you know, put your TV in the closet. Unplug it permanently. All right, moving on. Until we fully comprehend that the outside conditions are projections of our internal state, our influence over the train tracks of our lives is negligible. We merely drag ourselves along the standard route, which is not our design and does not benefit our growth. The good news is, is that all can be easily changed. Dissolving the old patterns and claiming the power of free will are wholly dependent on establishing an intimate acquaintance with the inner self. Again, he's talking about your own enfoldment, becoming more aware deeply with what it is to be a human being and what your sovereign rights are as a spiritual being. The truth is that we don't really have any responsibilities other than to ourselves. Real accountability starts and stops there. Until we choose to have children, we owe absolutely nothing to anyone. Not our parents, friends, husbands, wives, employers, flags, or country. No one. We may, however, choose to give heart and soul to all of these things and more. We may give selflessly, abundantly, and sincerely, but it is not owed. It is given of our own free will, or it is an empty bestowal. The sovereign spirit cannot be contracted. Okay, bam. That's a powerful statement. The sovereign spirit cannot be contracted. I'll just let you resonate on that one. Okay, what if we tear up the contracts of our responsibility and move them from day to day living altogether? Without the external answerability in place, would we now suddenly start acting with any less consideration, integrity, or purpose? No, we would not. Would everything slide into chaos and ruin? No. In fact, more consciousness becomes available for our deeds because it is no longer being squandered on upholding the fake burden of the cult liability. This results in an even higher capacity for noble conduct. All honorable exchanges are performed with total commitment. They are undertaken freely and they are undertaken gladly. I like that there because he's, he's showing how a truly aware and awake person that is sovereign um, actually lives a noble and honorable life. It's not really a movement of selfishness. It's a movement of wholeness. And um, hopefully that resonates through. So that's about all I'm going to say right there. This is an incredible book. I highly suggest people consider reading it. If you want to open your mind and learn a hell of a lot, um, not only about yourself, but about history and, well, about a lot of things. Um, it's called uh, The Organic Path to Clarity, Power, and Transformation, The Unfoldment by Neil Kramer. Thanks for listening.